Hi, I'm Fred, and this is Vlogmas 2020. Today's topic, the Rubik's Cube. Today's beer, Disaster at Moo. Mew, Mew, I don't know. This is another local brewery. This brewery is so local, they used to work with one of the founders. <laughs> Just for a few months. I've had this one tons of time. I have another one from the same brewery um, that will be coming up soon because we're running out of days. Um, I like them both. Although when I read this can, I probably wouldn't have bought it if I had read these notes. It says, it's a porter, biscuity, chocolate, coffee. Well, I don't like coffee, but I like this. The other one is my preferred. It's another brown ale. Well, I mean, it's a porter, so it looks it's darker. It's not as, it looks like a brown ale because it's not as dark as most, most porters. Yeah, it's got a bit of a, I guess I could taste the coffee if I think about it. Mostly just tastes like a, a roasted flavor. So the Rubik's Cube. Um, I had plans that actually solve this while I talked, but I really don't see it happening because I kind of like to look at the camera when I'm doing a Rubik's Cube, I have to look at the Rubik's Cube for the most part. I don't solve these for speed, I never have. Um, in the olden days, I had one of the original ones I got from my aunt that I used to, uh, some people would take the stickers off, which is why these are no longer stickers, they're actually plastic pieces. But that is not what I did. That one was so old, it would fall apart. You could just kind of like twist it this way and pop this off and then you take all the pieces off and you just put it back together as one whole thing. I still have that one. I've also got a stack of, this is one for my desk. It was at my office, I brought it home um, because most of our stuff is, they want it out of the office so it's easier to clean the desk. <clears throat> so now it's on its own little pedestal by my monitors with a stack of four other Rubik's Cubes, not including that one I grew up with. And not including one that I created in college, I bought her a standard Rubik's Cube. And I was doing a lot, just solving it here and there. Um, so I bought one, an extra one and actually covered it with different fabrics for textures. Uh, so I could do it blindfolded um, or with my eyes closed. Now since then, there have been commercially produced ones uh, for the blind, so I think that's a really cool uh, thing. If you are into cubes and uh, Rubik's Cube specifically, not just as a shape, um, and you feel like there's not a challenge anymore, grab one of those. They're, they're fun to mess with. Um, the uh, So the, there's the history to it, obviously. It was, you know, Erno Rubik, Czech, Slova, I don't remember where he's from. The only story I really remember from uh, it being released was that he, uh, the toy store, or the the whoever was going to produce it for him, didn't uh, the manufacturer didn't want to um, make them until he could prove that they were it was a puzzle that could be solved, because otherwise it was just this little goo gaw for someone to sit on their desk and play with, which as we now know you can make billions of dollars selling. Plenty of people are buying and selling things that have literally no purpose or solutions. Um, don't look at most of the stuff on my desk because you can see that I'm definitely one of them. Um, now, as far as solving methods, there are a few different ways of going about it. Um, I got one of the original solution books. Like I was probably in high school when I got this. And I felt it was the standard at home uh, solution for the longest time. Um, it's definitely things like I had that manual and I saw it other places, I guess is my point. What am I even trying to do here? Um, and so, yeah, it works. There's a lot of memorization. All of them are pretty much about memorization. Um, and speed cubers, I have some that are looser than this where you can just do here and just flip, 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 flip like. One finger easily. This one has this one has a little bit more grab, which I like just for playing around. The reason I keep it on my desk is because when I'm on a call, I can fiddle with it and not have to uh, st 
stare off into space and lose uh, focus, which is what happens typically if I'm on a call. Um, phones and me don't get along super well. Let's see, I'm trying to solve it. Uh, but I want to say at least a decade after that, close to, um, I found different ways online because the internet became more of a thing that I found to be easier. Um, easier ways of solving it. And the site I go to now, I believe, is LAR5. I always want to say LARS, but it's LAR. Um, which I think has kind of proven to be the... Darn it. The best way for me to solve it, at least. And it's... Uh, if, if I was doing this quick, I can show you more. Basically, so the, the first one that I saw, the, the official solution book, had you do it layer by layer. So first you do, you know, one face with all the edges matching. And once you know that's a goal, you can actually do that just no problem. You just kind of look at it. And I used to at least be able to solve it for uh, a face color without matching everything else, uh, all the edges. Um, so upgrading to doing the face with actually the first layer done too, not that difficult. Then you work on the second layer, then find the last layer. Uh, the method I like now, you actually start with just a quarter. And so you do the four by four by four, the, the three sides with uh, a fours, solve that. Then you get a chunk of it. So you get these uh, quote unquote 12 cube mini cubes done. They're, they're obviously you don't have the center one. The center one's a free space, like in bingo. And then uh, from there, you end up solving the two levels. Then the top layer is actually pretty much the same way. And my approach is I don't ever want to do speed, so the memorization you always have to do, you have to do uh, mirrors because you can be on the left or the right and the different ways you have to spin things. The way I found it to make it easier so I could pick up a cube and solve it usually, um, last time I did this, which was a couple days ago, I actually messed it up. Uh, there's one or two steps near the end I always get confused in my head. Um, but if you ignore the fact that there's the reverse images and try to do it the quickest way, there's... Like five or six steps you have to remember and the motions you need to remember are very few. The first several steps, there's no memorization at all. You're just kind of looking at it and figuring it out. So what I've got here is I'm working on the white side. So I've got from white down to blue done and white down to orange done. And I'm trying to get this corner with the blue, orange, the blue, white, and orange. And I, because I'm talking while doing it, I can't get them to line up properly. <laughs> Oops. Um... Nope, that wasn't it. I started with a point. Oh, so those parts are easy. So then when you get down to the uh, the next part, the, the part that starts getting hard is when you've got the band all the way through that, that 12 section. Um, in order to get the the rest of the pieces, side pieces flipped around right, you have to remember a different thing. And that one's a fairly quick move. It's just... Like three or four moves. Like three. That's a uh, one, two, three. Yeah, four, I think. Um, and then after that, you have to remember a couple complicated moves. So the thing of it is, because the cube is rotational, you can go through and do the same uh, set of moves twice to get the same effect as if you did the reverse moves once. And I'm not going for speed, so I have no problem double doubling moves just to get it done. And typically. I would be able to get this done, you know, within the time allotted here. Uh, sometimes my son, I, both my kids have one. My daughter may not have hers anymore. My son will bring his out and mess it up specifically so I will solve it. Oops, see, you can't do that either. Um, so, and the thing of it is, is that once you do kind of figure out a method, at least for me, I found, um, I can't help but mess with it. If I see a cube that's not solved, if I don't have to focus on what's going on around me especially, um, I'll definitely grab one. I've been to like doctor's visits with my kids and there's an unsolved Rubik's Cube sitting there and I picked it up while we were talking and solved it before we left. So, I mean, it's just, it is a puzzle, but I think for me more than anything, it's a old school fidget spinner it's just something to play with and you can spin it see there we go Wee. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, there's no way I'm solving that. I'll, I'll have it done uh, probably before I uh, shut everything down. Um, that's it. Rubik's Cube. It's just something I like. I don't... When I was writing up topics, it was sitting on my desk, so <laughs> I just grabbed it and went. Ow. Oh, I was like, I screwed something up already. All right, let's see. I don't think I have enough time. Let's see how far. We'll have a little quiet time as I try to solve this. Maybe two minutes after that went off and stopped recording, I solved it. <laughs> so it's basically what you should do with focus. And from there you can do different patterns, of course. I found out um, as a kid, as long as you kind of do everything in pairs, you can easily bring it back to uh, where you started from. That's not what I expected to do at all. This little flower pattern, as I always thought of it, was kind of my favorite. So it was easy enough to do. And bring it right back. There's also the full checkerboard, which I feel is like the easiest pattern and a fun one for kids especially to work on. So anyway, thanks for sticking around for my ruminations on the Rubik's Cube. Seemed like quite the turn of phrase I didn't mean to do. Uh, go ahead and watch the ones you missed. Stick around for the rest of these. This is the 16th, so there's only eight days left. Christmas is coming up soon. Time flies when you're having fun or something. Um, also, check out my other channels. Okay, if you've already watched the Fred Draws and the Fred Makes, you're caught up. All right, just go out and watch those few videos and watch all of the ones here. And then there's hundreds on the regular, uh, on the, uh, the main channel on Fred. So go catch up there. It'll take you a little bit. It'll take a little bit of time. Not, not too long, but, you know, some time. Um, you got to take breaks for, you know, sleep and whatnot. I'm probably going to cut out a lot of the babbling I did in the first part of this video, so I have uh, more chance to babble here. I didn't look up any more uh, uh, toast, so uh, I don't know. Salute.